Introducing the fake PTA Tour Golfer, Tiger's best friend, my dad, Danny Woodhead. Also introducing the self-proclaimed science expert, an amateur ramen noodle chef, my dad, Matt Slauson. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. So it's Danny Woodhead here, Matt Slauson, Out of Nowhere Pod. Uh, you can find us on about any platform available where you find pods. You can uh, find us on Twitter, on Instagram at at O-O-N pod. Um, and, and yeah, maybe you'll see some real exciting things like me swinging a golf club, hurting myself, you know, standard tradition thing. Or Slaw out there acting like he's a farmer in zero degree weather. So come check us out. Uh, we have multiple shows a week. And, and, and see what you think. Subscribe. Give us a review if you want, as long as it's the best review possible or the worst. It has to be the best or the worst. We don't want anything in between. So, yeah, that's where you can find us. So I, uh, last night, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sleeping. And I'm, I don't know if you're one of those tradish peers in the middle of the night. Like, you wake up multiple times. I know someone's going to be like, oh, yeah, that's not healthy. I've done it since I was five. All right. So anyone out there questioning my pee? Wait, you've been, you been waking up since the, in the middle of the night since you were five to pee? Oh, oh my gosh. I always did. Otherwise, yeah, I peed okay. to bed. Okay, good. I mean, isn't that, isn't that standard tradition? Yeah. Okay. But this is something I ran into, and probably more so since I got married and since I got lazy. In the middle of the night, no longer did I start standing to pee. <laughs> Never. Mm. It was one of those things where it's like I'm still sleeping a little because I'm walking in there and my eyes are kind of closed. It's like I can just sit down. And I, I sit down and pee, take my time, and then I go back to bed. Well, what ends up happening is I end up treasuring that time that I have in the middle of the night. And now I sit down to pee almost in, unless I'm in a public, you know, a public forum. I sit down to pee. As I'm looking at you, I feel like you're a little bit confused. Yeah, I'm I'm not not a sitter, a sitter to peer. OK, um, I, I, I don't know if that's what you call it, but yeah, sitting to pee is not really uh, something that that I've dabbled in uh, okay. unless, you know, I was dealing with an injury uh, or unless I was very sick and I knew it was going right. to become an explosive situation. Right. Um, but then there's, you know, you're sitting, th things are coming out of everywhere and you also got a bucket handy just in case it, it creeps out the top end. Uh, yeah. Just, just volunteering to stand or to sit in lieu of standing seems like a lot of unnecessary work for me. Well, sitting down is not hard for me. I don't see it as work. And then this is the other thing that I think of is when you do pee standing up, which I'm not acting like I don't, I still do in public forums every once in a while I will at home, but not often, but the rim gets damaged, you know, a little splash you, back, a little residue and you being taller. Mm -hmm. I almost see it as like the Niagara falls. Think about the Niagara falls. It just kind of splashes everywhere. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like I don't, that, I don't see uh, that as mist, something, the mist at the bottom from, from the billions of gallons coming down. Yeah. I, I, I just, I, I don't I know see exactly that as what you're effective. I don't see it as effective. I'm, I'm all about trying to be efficient in everything that I do in my life. And I feel like pain sitting down is super efficient. It, Scott, yeah. Scott, what about you? Do you sit down? I, no. no, not at all. <laughs> I will say oh I, can, I can see that there are some dis disadvantages to peeing standing up. There's, there's the, the health benefits of sitting down is amazing. <laughs> 
when you are taller and again this is this is a realm you you wouldn't understand but I when agree. you're when you're taller um there there's a greater distance uh which which means the force of the stream is is, is greater it's picking up speed uh on the way down well but and, can i say this i'm st- i'm obviously not tall but i'm also not blessed in that area yeah. So some people that are taller that are blessed are peeing from the same yeah. height. Well, trust me, my 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 stream distance is much greater than yours. <laughs> I have supreme stream distance. Uh, You're blessed so, with the distance. So by the time it touches the water, I, it, there's some serious splashback. And, and I will say I've had to repaint the walls. Um, <sighs> Uh, there's there's been a speckling, <laughs> I guess you would call it. Yeah, that's what most people call the the P res is yeah. speckling. Mm-hmm. So the speckling on the walls, you had to repaint your the side of your bathroom wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you don't want to have guests over and like, hey, what's all these splashes all over the wall? Oh, l- oh, look at that urine on the wall. <laughs> I love going to the Slossons' house. Have you seen their bathroom? Yeah, they got a lot of urine over there. It's just, it's, it's a lot of, see, to me, I see that as character. Yeah. So why, why get rid of it? And the wife gets all upset at me. Uh, and I see, say, no, that, that's do, why I started sitting down. Right. Because you I don't say, have what do you want me to do? I said, what do you want me to do? I'm not peeing all over the seat like I'm a kid. I'm, I'm peeing in the bowl. It's just such a great distance because, uh, because my deal is so small. And then, and, and then with my height, you know, it's really far away. <laughs> never, I've never heard of that as a, I've heard as, as a word to define. Yeah. The you deal. know, my deal, the deal, you know, ah, what, what's the gracious. deal with it's the deal? cold out here. My deal's really feeling a little bit small, but, we were, uh, but I, I got it right away. Well, I, yeah, because you you're, you're, it was on point. your minds in the gut are just like ours. You know the deal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know about his deal. I got you. I, I feel you. I, I feel you. Um, but yeah, sitting down has became, it's something I, ch- this is a challenge. I challenge you guys to try it. I've, I, my brother-in-laws, I remember when I brought it up, they're like, wow, are you serious? Now they don't stand. They don't. Because they realize how much of a blessing sitting down is. Because it, sometimes it's like, especially if you have kids, which you do, mm-hmm. it's like, I'm going to go to the bathroom. You tell your wife. And sometimes you just go in there for five minutes and you pee for 30 seconds. So what are you and doing it's, for it, the it, other it, four and a half minutes? Nah, you just look on your phone or something. I don't know. It's just it's a debriefing time. It's just an escape. Ah, I from- gotcha. It's a scrape. It's like the only safe spot you have left. And you don't have to rush your deal. Mm-hmm. You can, you could go long. I mean, you could go in third, like 15 second increments. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I have now gra- graduated. Most of my urine slanging happens outdoors now. Um, oh, I, bro. I, I still do it. I, I live in, you know, you've seen where I live. I mm-hmm. live in a, a development like where there's it's neighborhood. I can't tell you how often I pee outside. I just go. It's like, oh, no one's going to see me. This is not a very busy street. I'm going to go to the bathroom. And sometimes (laughs) I've done it in our front yard. You know where I live in our front yard. Well, it would actually be in the landscape area, but it's just right by our garage. Oh, so do you now have to register as a sex offender? (laughs) No, I don't. But there's a it's park just, in your backyard, so no. But I have an issue. When I go to the, the bathroom, if I go in the landscaping, usually we have plants there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like I said, that's one of the areas I'm not very blessed in. I'm fine. No one's gonna see me. I can't yeah. even see me. Yeah, I don't need a whole lot of plant to block me. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, you know, what's my favorite. Now that we're this, I don't know how pink sitting down got to this on the golf course one of my favorite things to do i mean because the golf shorts are good nowadays like stretchy i just go in a lunge position and just sneak out one of the legs 
I've seen you do that. It is it not the impressive. most? Am- Remember when I did that at the Big Money Golf Classic? Yeah, that was impressive. I was super excited about that because I was just, a, I was a pro golf tourney, and I made sure to sling some urine just off the fairway. Because on we started on the back, on the back. Yeah, so, yeah, that was whole technically hole eleven. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, you know, it's one of those things. I, I've been blessed to find ways to pee in public, but still be secretive. Yeah, I just go in in my pants and. and <laughs> How many how how many times did you pee your pants in, in football? Uh a fair amount. Um, it wasn't like ten, was it? If it was a rainy game, probably was. If it was a rainy game, pretty much every time. <laughs> uh, but it also depend uh if I'm wearing white pants, I tried to avoid it. That's fair. Uh because that that's all you need is just yellow, yellow stains going down you know, whatever. Uh, but if it was an away game and it was raining out almost every time. That's good to know. That mm-hmm. means, because I mean, if you did it, that means a lot of offensive linemen do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we we went down the rabbit hole and now you're opening up a new can of worms. Okay. Uh, when I was in Chicago, I would debate this with a couple of guys on the offensive line about um about number twos and the cleanup activities the techniques used wait cleanup activities like if you go in your pants no no oh no no obviously oh, that's just, oh, just that's yeah. that's normal to do anyways if it's yeah if you're not in white yeah, yeah you just take your football glove you scrape out whatever you can and then you and then you grab a towel but you're talking about if, the wiping activities yeah is what you're wiping talking about. activities um okay. And the philosophy and techniques used. And one of my teammates, not going to say his name, Jermon Bushrod, uh, <laughs> but he would argue with me that you have to stand up to wipe. So I want to know if either of you got into that realm of things, because I, I can't figure out how to do it. When I was younger, I did. I don't understand how to do it. Well, the thing is, it's not, it's not super clean to do it that way. Because think about it. If you think of, you know, anatomy and physiology, I just felt like I should say that. Mm -hmm. If you stand up, it's going to, it's going to give you false. It's it's going to give, yes. And it's going to give you a false reading on, on your TP. Right. So then if, if the only way you do is standing up, I'll tell, I don't want to see Bushrod's undies (laughs) because if, if he is taking the false, security of a stand-up wipe Mm -hmm. he's in trouble he's in trouble because that means he has dirty underwear all the time and that's not a good thing his claim was the exact opposite he said as a large man it gives you better leverage wrong leverage oh and also back to front wiping versus front to back wiping what are you front to back all the way without a doubt i'm not gonna risk pulling stuff into areas I don't want it. Right. I can risk that. No. If I pull it up my back, that's okay. But I don't want to pull it up the front. That's exactly right. Uh, what, what about you, Scott? I'm just amazed. No, front to back People, or back to front. Keep, number one, standing he's up. Back, makes he's zero back sense. to front. I'm back to front. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Hey, so, uh, yeah, uh, not a lot of people want to listen to this. And that, I'm okay with that, but there are also a lot of people that I feel need like to know I'd need stuff. a shower. I, 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 would, I would feel like I have to shower every time. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's like, oh, go into the bathroom. Got to queue let's up, have the, this, queue let's up have the shower. This, let's have this conversation in 15 years when you guys hit my age. I'm always going to be front to back, without a doubt. Well, and the older you get, the beanbag droops more. So... I mean, it's just a greater chance of cross contamination, or just checking on them to make sure they're okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so yeah. My 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 former teammate, uh, he push, he would claim right. as a large human being, standing up to pee is much more efficient because not it, pee to wipe. Or sorry, 
standing up to wipe gives you better leverage positions to really dig in there. And I disagree because my technique is you use the toilet seat to do the one cheek sneak and to pry yourself <sighs> open so you can really get in there. And as far as toilet pa paper, I don't know about you. I don't like soft toilet paper. Soft toilet paper. It's I don't like just, it. No, I, I mean, I, I don't like I don't grab. want it. I don't want it like rest area hard. No, no, I, I don't want where you have to unspool like 10 times the amount or else, you know, you're breaking through and then you have to wash your hands and that's a whole mess. Yeah, you uh, don't want to wash your hands. No, after number two. No. So I like a nice, rough, thick paper, not soft. Um, I do like it thick with the rid ridges on it. So you can really, you can really grind in there. Oh my gosh. Bro, oh, baby the, wipes. Man. The torque ratio no, of the toilet the paper is important. Yes, but we need thing... to get into wipes. Okay, go ahead. I am not a believer in wipes. And what's the reasoning for that? Because False after I wipe, I feel like I need to wipe. Yes, I agree. If you use wipes, you have to rewipe with a dry. Yeah. It's it's just okay. like it's just like if you're uh say cleaning the counters. It's very <laughs> it's very similar to washing the counters. And if you have too much, say you have a washcloth and you didn't wring it out enough, mm -hmm. well, the counter is going to be wet. So you have to go over it with like a paper towel or something. Yeah. And it's so leaving it, streaks it's kind, everywhere. Right. It's mm -hmm. the same. It's literally the same exact thing. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> yes. Uh, I'll tell you what. Bushrod is wrong. Uh, see, this is what happens when. Uh, we need to get him on the pod. You, you know, he's got a pod himself. Well, we'll have to we'll have to uh, talk to him uh, about those issues. Well, move, moving on from poop and pee, um, it is absolutely ruthlessly cold in Nebraska right now. I was driving home from the Creighton basketball game where they dominated Villanova. I was on the way back from the Creighton game. Had the defrost in the feet heater you know on like at 11 which is the highest it can go and i got home it's a 25 minute drive from my house i get home and my legs are so cold like my thighs mm -hmm. it is that cold that even i was driving yesterday to menards i had to get some stuff in my feet same deal and i even had the heater on blasting my feet were freezing it is so cold here it rivals antarctica mm -hmm. yes. how are you because i don't have to go outside unless i'm going to menards but pretty much i'm not going outside you have to go outside otherwise your animals are going to die what does that look like? I saw on Instagram, you know, you, uh, Scotty, posting, you know, your little fake farming outfit. Um, but you kind of showed that you are a little bit of a rancher, huh? Yeah. So I had on um, my long underwear, first and foremost. Okay. My, hun my hunting socks. And then some quilt, quilt lined overalls. Uh, over top and then a sweatshirt on over the long underwear and then I, I, I wear all that under the overalls and then my my heavy heavy farming jacket over the top of everything there uh, and I was still freezing absolutely freezing uh, I was pushing snow all morning long and then having to feed feed the animals uh, in the middle of pushing snow I use I use the gate gator and it's and it's got a blade on it and uh i'm too cheap to pay for the doors that go on the thing so it's just open open on the sides and i'm just getting blasted with with negative 25 degree wind chill wind and snow and after about half an hour i said screw this and i got in the enclosed cab skid skid lo loader and just went to town it was awesome see you're you're a better man than me because you're out there fighting for those animals' lives. 
You really are. I mean, you're, I do. you're, you're putting your life on the line is the way I see it. It's that cold out here. There's a 95% chance if I had those animals, they'd be dead. I know there's going to be a lot of people out there that are animal lovers. They're like, woodheads, terrible. No, I'm looking out for my life. If I am outside for more than five minutes, there's a chance I'm, I'm done. I'm a thought, 195. Had- maybe it's because you're extra, you're extra layer. Built in? Because you're just a little bit bigger than yeah. I am. Yeah, I got built in layers. So, for so sure. maybe that's how you're able to do it. That's, maybe that's how you're able to do it and still function. See, I don't know if I could do it. We would have how many, how many donkeys do you have? Four. Two, four three. Oh, four. How many? You have any cows? Or well, one, one, one of them isn't really a donkey, it's a, it's a miniature mule. So Same that's, diff. <laughs> yeah, sort of. And then do you have a couple cows or something? Yeah, four cows. So you have four and four. Mm-hmm. My guess, if I had four and four, by the end of this Arctic blast, I'd have one and one. <laughs> and it's because one of those would take all the food and all the so-called water or whatever, and that's how they would, I mean, you know, Whoever's the alpha of the group. So I'm confused I, at, I think, at your comment of so called water. <laughs> what is that? Well, because it'd freeze. Is that like fake fake water? No, because it would freeze. Yeah, true. Right? Okay. And I'm mm-hmm. not going and and daddy over here isn't going out there to break through. Daddy's that, inside by the That is by the, the crazy fire. thing. I mean, this white collar farming I got going on. I have a tank heater in the trough and it is still freezing inches thick. Yeah, that's definitely not blue collar farming. No. Other farmers make fun fun of me because I have a I have a heat heater in the tank. Like, and no, it didn't even get, it didn't even go work. out there every day and, and break up the ice. Oh yeah th- okay. think about it. Yeah yeah think about it though. Think about if my animals wanted water. I would just think eat the snow. That's what I would say if I could communicate with them, which I can't. But, and that's, it's the survival of the fittest. Maybe a couple of the donkeys survive because they're smart enough to eat the snow. Mm -hmm. My guess is they're not. My guess is those, those animals are going to be fighting for their lives. This morning when I got up, it was minus 12 with a wind chill of minus 30. The low Good. tonight is minus 25. So that means the wind chill, if it stays at this rate, is going to be roughly minus 50. I'm sitting down right now with pants, a shirt, socks, and I can't feel my toes. Mm-hmm. If anyone wants to come visit Nebraska and tour Nebraska, come now. Well, I did, I did it- I, uh I do think the the cold is so aggressive, and hopefully that goes away. Ho- hopefully it goes away. Maybe that's why. Maybe Philip Rivers saw this coming, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm retiring." I I know there's some ar- there's an Arctic blast, and it's going to be like this next year too. Yeah. I don't want to play well, anymore. My well, body I mean- hurts. My joints hurt. He's he's elderly now, so he's got the thin, he is. thin skin. You know, the, the cold just cuts right on through it. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of my parents. You know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, not really my parents. My grandparents is what Philip reminds me of a lot. He's got super thin, super thin skin, and his joints are just really creaky. But also like ours. How many, how many grand, grandparents do you have still, still living? Um. I have both on my mom's side and then on my dad's side, uh, my grandpa, but he's, uh, he's got dementia. And so I, that's a yeah, rough deal. Five. Doesn't know who I am. Yeah. Yeah. But, but three, five, how do you get five? Uh, oh, I thought you said both sets. Yeah. No, that doesn't no, make no. any One, sense to me. Okay. Now I either understand. way, you, either you way, three. both sets is four. Yeah. Yeah. You, I have three left. You have three. 
And I would say you're that's you're, that's crazy how I said I have three left. Like I have something in right. my pocket. Like, oh, you, I got three. You're 35 now. Uh, 35? Yeah, six. 30, 36. 36. I just turned 36. 36. Best year of my life already, though. And you got three GPs still. Yeah. Still with us. Yeah. You are extremely Dominating. lucky. I Your am. My, kids my grandpa have three great grandparents. How sweet is that? Yeah, but they only know two of them because my my grandpa on my dad's side is in a like in a home like he he has dementia and can't so they don't really know him but mm -hmm. they know the the other ones the other two yeah gotcha it's pretty sick yeah i Not, i only have i only have one one of my gps really yeah she's a stud though she's 96 and just holy rocking. crap just crushing it yeah crushing life dang so does that mean does that mean you're gonna live till you're 96? You think? 100 percent no. What what's what's your expected living? Like how I, long are you? Do you think? What, what as setting, it looks right now today? I'm setting the over under at 60, and Ooh. and I I am taking the over, but not not by much. 63 ish. Yeah, I I think if I hit 65, I'll be a lucky man. Mine Just, changes by the day. Play, sometimes I think I'm going to live till I'm 95. Sometimes it's 97. You know, yeah. give or take a few years. Yeah, it really depends on what what my activities are like that that week. Um, I mean, if so you think I'm going to live? So I'm I'm 36. You think I'm going to live an extra 36 more years than you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I have I have a good solid 30 years left. Um, hey Scott, you're still gonna be alive when I'm 96, right? Oh, no. oh, well, I'm gonna have like to find a new producer. I'm gonna have to find a new producer into my 90s. <laughs> yeah, holy crap! Looks like I'm gonna uh, only got a few years left of this. Take your teeth out before you start potting to be me. Holy crap! Hey, we're we're talking about Phil. This is something I wanted to to get to. Um, retiring and now that football's over the decisions are going to be made right of are you retiring are you staying for the guys that have played 10 years or whatever um obviously a lot of people know my thoughts on this and kind of yours a little bit mm -hmm. but what would let's talk a little bit about like what goes through our mind when it comes there and now that we're on this side of it what's probably the best decision well uh Obviously, because you retired at 10 or after 10. Yep. I retired after 10. Uh, I know our, our philosophies are, are aligned. Uh, 10 is a good, good number. Just get out. Because really, what left are you chasing after 10? If you're lucky enough to play 10, you've maxed out all your retirements. Uh, you've you've made, made a good wage. Uh, you know, you've, you've, you've done really well for your family. Um, so actually, uh, you and I talked a lot throughout, uh, my last, last season playing and the beginning of the off season, uh, you and I discussed a lot of, of, you know, what, what direction should, should I go? And at the time you were very passionate about, dude, what the hell are you doing? Get out of there, get home. Let's start the pod. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, I need to figure out what's right. Once I realized like what left is there for me to do? I did everything I wanted to do because the reality was I didn't think I was going to make some. one. Right. Yeah, I didn't think I was going to make one. And then I got 10 out of it. And, uh, and Not only we were professional football players, we were professional tomfooleries. We tricked organizations to oh, keep yeah. us for 10 years, right? Well, well, after knowing how some organizations, some organizations are run, uh, not that easy to outsmart some of them. That is true. Or, that, sorry, not or that it, hard. No, not, not that, that hard. hard. Just to say, wait a second. It's kind sorry, of easy I'm not to very trick. smart. I'm not very that's, smart. But I was fair. able to outsmart some exactly you were fooling mm -hmm. but but that's the thing we we were able to play 10 years even if you're at eight nine years it's it's 
my, when I when I went to decide, hey, are you sticking around or you're not? Are, are you going to keep going or not? There was that, that was actually the year Ryan Shazier got hurt. Mm-hmm. And he couldn't. That was scary. One of the scarier things I've seen in football. And I had four kids. And I remember talking to my wife. I'm like, I don't know how much longer I'm going to do this. Because I was like, I don't want to be that guy that has to go out of the hospital in a wheelchair holding his kids. I want to walk out of the hospital. Well, I don't want to be in the hospital unless, you know, you're there for like a birth of your child. But I didn't want to be in there for a, a football reason. And that's, I think, when I was like, you know what, Danny? The NFL has been pretty good to you. Been really good having this conversation with myself and saying, and and I remember with with the people that know me know that I'm a faith based person. I felt like I was I was praying about it, and it was like, all right, you've had ten good years. What else do you have to prove? Nothing. And it's like, get out. God's taken care of me for ten years. Now, if I would have decided to play, I really believe God would have taken care of me. But it was almost like that's when I knew. It's like you had ten years of. Yeah, I had some injuries. You had some injuries, but like of great health. Outside, like we had some major surgeries, but like you can bounce back from those. And I think the thing is when you're when you're thinking about it, say people are right now. I'd say get out. You made a great living. Go go to the next part of your life because the next part of your life is even better. Like I I I literally in the last three years have had like more fun than I had in the 10 years in the NFL. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you're playing, playing, you know, the, the numbers game, uh, the reason there's not a lot of, of older vets anymore is because the league knows once you hit that double digit range outside of the quarterback position, injuries pile on at an exponential rate they're just coming Uh, and teams know they're going to be on the hook for that so uh that was that was something i i had to look at you know after after year nine when i was considering retiring that was more of a principled stand because i was i was a free agent and I was still playing really good football. And I knew, I knew where my pay realm should be. And I said, look, if, if I don't get in that realm, I'm going home because I'm not playing, playing for less, less than this. And I know that that sounds like a huge asshole thing to, to, to think. Uh, but that was my reality. When you're talking about moving yourself, moving your family, uh, kids in different schools uh pretty much just shaking up everything and and putting yourself in extreme risk the numbers have to make make sense and make it worth it so i knew the realm i should be in uh i got in that realm thankfully in my last last year but then a serious injury happened and and it was a scary one and it's embarrassing, and I kind of kick myself for even considering to play again after that. I think part part of that was that was all I knew. That was all I did for you know twenty two years, twenty three years of my life. So uh, I think part of the reason why I was still considering playing was just because that's that's what I do. I just oh, play. You know. And once I had the reckoning, it's like, what are you doing? moron what, what more are you trying trying to get out of this nothing nothing there's nothing left out outside of a super bowl ring and and there's so much luck involved in that that's just like okay there's there's really nothing left so what right. the hell are you doing here go home be a dad be a husband because that's who needs you now i remember having those conversations with you Actually, down here in my my basement, I, I still remember having those conversations, and because there were multiple, and I remember in my head, not thinking you're an idiot. 
but like because I was on the other side, I already knew I'm like, oh my gosh, what's he thinking? But then it's like, well, I was in the same shoes. I did the same thing. I tried to convince him. It's like, oh, I can play. If I get this certain number, I, I, I there's nothing wrong with that. You have to have something that's worth it when you're putting your body on the line and the percentage of you getting injured when you're that old just shoots through the roof. Yeah. So I, I still remember that. And until you get to this side, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And then once you get on this side, it makes a ton of sense. Our buddy, Nick Hardwick, I mean, he, he put something on Instagram, I think, before Phil even retired and said, what would I tell Philip Rivers? And he basically said, get out while you have your health and get out while you can, you know, still be, know you're going to be able to play with your kids and just this, that, and the other. And, and just saying how unbelievable this side of the NFL is, as long as you have your priorities where they need to be and where football is not everything in your life, then you're going to be okay. Um, mm-hmm. And, and I, I think I think that's what I'd tell them is, hey, just make sure that football is not your whole life. Um, because if if it's not, this side of the NFL is absolutely bonkers awesome. Yeah. That's just – that's kind of where I stand. And, you know, it's funny we're talking about that. And then it's also February, and it also brings back kind of some memories um, of getting ready for pro day, combine – uh, all of the above. And it's like, it's completely different. It's like, h- how, how do you prepare for that? How do you, cause I know some people are like, you guys have been through it. Well, I haven't been through the combine cause I didn't get invited. Cause obviously I sucked. Um, I, but there, I, I did. You weren't missing much. Yeah. It was, it was literally didn't, but I mean, obviously it didn't, it wasn't going to help me. They just, it, it wasn't, they didn't want to, they didn't want to draft me. No, I did. And that's okay. But uh, the thing that that I want to go through just, well, we only have a few more minutes, but go through with kind of what you, what, what would you tell someone, it's the complete other end, but what would you tell a kid coming in what you need to focus on to make a team or to make an impression even, because you're not even on a team, you're not even signed. Well, I, I think it all depends on the situation for that kid uh, project, project projected uh, draft status. Uh, Cause if he's projected as, you know, super high, then what I'd tell him is different than if he's a mid round or a late round or, or an undrafted guy. Uh, in my mind, an undrafted guy, everybody's the same, get an opportunity and, and your future will be set of what you do on the field and in the classroom. It's not going to be set at your pro day. Because if, if you're good enough, the NFL is going to find you and give you right. a, a shot. Is it going to be a real shot? Probably not because you weren't drafted. But you will get some sort of shot to make an impression. And then as soon as you hit the classroom, you have to, you have to dominate the classroom because when you're on the field opportunity comes you need to make sure you're playing at a veteran level when you are an undrafted rookie to even get looked at in the realm of other rookies you have to be playing at veteran level and you can't do that if you don't know what the hell you're doing and i think you know what's funny is even like first rounders second rounders third rounders the guys that are guaranteed Some of the guys that don't do well is I don't think they understand this. I don't think a lot of guys understand this. The classroom is the most important part of the NFL, of making teams. That's where you spend 80% of your time. (laughs) You have to be able to know the plays, know everyone else. You have to, as a running back, you need to know protections. You need to know what the line's doing on runs. Because it doesn't just cut it anymore to just show up and run the ball. It just doesn't cut it when, once you're in the NFL. you got to know what to do. And a lot of guys, not just running backs, all positions, but a lot of guys struggle because they're like, well, I just, I just want to play ball. Well, that's, you don't just play ball in the NFL. Everyone's really freaking good. Yep. Without a doubt, everyone's really good. So the thing that you need to focus on for 
is controlling what you can control. Control that. You can't control if scouts are going to like you. You can't control if a GM is going to like you. You can't control if any coaches are going to like you. But you can control what you do to prepare. And preparations, the num- I mean, that's that's like the number one thing. Yeah. You prepare to, like, for me, looking back, I did everything I could make sure I was ready to play any position. A lot of people don't know it. I got elevated to the New York Jets roster as a wide receiver because we had a bunch of wide receivers hurt The two, three previous weeks, I did some wide receiver stuff on scout team and ended up doing really well. And I got put in positions where, like, hey, do you know this play? Like, can you just step in? Because we we had a bunch of injuries at receiver. And I was like, yeah, for sure. And I showed them that I knew what I was doing. And once, I think it was was either Jericho Cotri or Brad Smith got hurt, and we needed a receiver for that game and someone that could play special teams. And they said, can you do it? I go, yeah, of course I can do it. So it all started in the classroom. None of that had anything to do with me running a 4 three forty. It all had me being able to know, all right, if I'm the number two spot on trips, what am I running on this route? Or just where to line up. People don't even know where to line up at, re- at certain receivers. And that was what I took away from the NFL. And if I tell someone, just make sure you're always prepared and control what you can control. And I'm sure it's the same on the offensive line to, to be a swing guard, be able to play all three inside positions, whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, You know, go going back uh, to what I was saying uh, about what I'd tell an undrafted guy, let's go to the other side and, and let's say you've got, a guy that's uh, projected first round, second round. You know, he's, he's, he, he's a lock to be a high draft, draft pick guy. What would I tell him as far as pro day and combine? I'd say don't do anything that could hurt, hurt your draft, draft stock. So if you're not a good 40 runner, do not do it. If you're going to go out there and you're going to run a 5-7 as an offensive lineman, it's better – that you just don't do it because then the league will assume that you're going to run a five, two. They're going to assume that. Right. Um, I don't think any position should ever bench because if you look at that, that drill at the combine or pro pro day, that drill can only hurt you for one. It's the highest risk, risk of injury drill for, for combine slash pro day. And if you destroy it, if if, if you get, as an offensive lineman, if you get 35 or 40 reps, you know what the NFL is going to say? Strong. Check. And that's it. That's yeah. all it gets you. It doesn't do anything. A lot of the stuff doesn't do any for, anything for you unless you run really fast. That's really, I mean. Yeah. I think, and, and it I, didn't, and I it think didn't do anything jumps, for me, obviously. I think the jumps are extremely important. And uh, now, for me, I think it's extremely important for for the big guys because it shows power and explosion, uh, which it, which carries over, obviously, dramatically in football. Uh, I think I think it's extremely important in every position, but specifically the big guys, broad jump, vertical jump, are very important. But if you're not good at jumping, do not do it. If you're not good at the forty. Do not do it. I would tell everybody, do not bench. And your interviews, make sure you know everything about basic runs and basic pr- protections. And and it's not just knowing what your one position does. It's knowing what all positions do. I, re- I remember sitting down with Bill, Bill Callahan at the Combine and him going over run, r- <clears throat> running plays. He had me drop three running plays. And I studied my ass off of uh of what what all the blockers do and so he had me do jab 36 power out of uh out of flood yeah and so i did you know 
left tackle, left guard, center, right guard, right tackle. And he goes, okay, well, what is the why? Why doing? I'm like, oh, crap. I didn't study that. What is, what is the F, F doing? What is the X doing? What is the Z doing? I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I, now, of course, I, I, I knew what the Y and the F does. because Yeah, but you didn't know the X and the Z. X and the Z. I'm like, wait, wait, what? I have to know this? Never in my life did I have to pay attention to what a receiver's doing. The X going to get the safety and depending but, on. Right. Right. Is it, is it, you know, is he locked up or is he push, push crack? Um, and I just guessed and luckily I was right. <laughs> uh, but I realized really fast if, if you want to be considered a smart player and, and have a chance, those are things you have to know. Cause even if I'm just playing tackle my whole career, if you know it, like a center does your reaction time goes I mean, it's incredible. So if you know it like a center knows it, and a center absolutely has to know who's responsible for what safety. And uh, and so luckily, I guess right. But looking back now, it wouldn't be too terribly difficult to understand on three running concepts what the X and the Z are doing. And you should absolutely right. know what the five linemen are doing and the F and the Y are doing. It's, it's one of those things, control what you can control. Do what you're supposed to do. Know what you're supposed to do. I mean, that's in football, but that's in everything. I mean, holy crap. Know what you're supposed to do in all scenarios in whatever your job is. I think that's, I mean, I think, I think we can live our life that way. And if, if we live our life that way, I think, uh, I think our country would be in a, you know, our businesses, our everything. I think it's only going to flourish if we just do our jobs and <laughs> holy crap. I just went back to Bill Belichick, but just do it. <laughs> just, just do what you're supposed to do. Check us out on our Twitter, Instagram at OON pod. Um, yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you enjoy it. We got a, we got a lot of shows uh, coming for you here in the future.